to say for right now. And I'm going to invite my cast out, well, several of my cast members. And then what they can do is they can show you what I'm talking about. Okay? So um, if you guys would just give us this space for a second. And please don't go anywhere. Please don't sit down over here. Okay? <laughs> I just want to make a little room. Hold on for a second. <laughs> So, um, as my cast come up, I just want to tell you a little bit about me in a poem that I wrote some time ago. Some time ago. Um, it's called Neighborhood Bottle and Can Man. What you call it? Trash Can Freddy? <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do.
Well, I see that's my time. Well, I wasn't done, but thanks for letting me share. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Frank. Hi, Frank. And I'm Nat. You know, I always was my mother's baby and my sister's little brother. <laughs> I climbed out my mother's womb, and I was constantly trying to find another womb to climb in. <laughs> but anyway, thank God for recovery. Because recovery afforded me the opportunity to do something different. See, I didn't stop getting high until my mama died, my sister started smoking crack, and my baby mama, my baby mama put me out for real, for real. 20 years, two months, and 12 days ago, I gave my six-month-old son a press. Then I went into the bathroom with the ten-dollar bowel of crack. My son almost choked to death while I ran around our two-bedroom flat like I was retarded or something. My son was turning purple, y'all. So, so I picked him up. I ran out the house into the hall. And guess what? The nurse that lived across from me was walking in. Woo! Higher power ain't no joke. That day, I put down my stem. And that's God to help me become a man. Because I didn't get the memos on how to do that. Because my father, he never put down his stem. But that's another story. That same little boy, that same little boy that almost killed when he was six months old, turned 14 some years ago. <laughs> yeah. And he got him a summer job. I said, son, save your money. And when you turn 16, daddy gonna help you buy a car. <laughs> well, he turned 16. He didn't save his money. He didn't drive. And I didn't drive. He was lucky if I gave him money to buy a bus pass. <laughs> As a father, I offer the same proposition as God. You take one step, and I'll take two. Furthermore, I'm a recovering now. And I don't smoke nothing, drink nothing, or sniff nothing. And ain't nothing coming up in my house that do. You see, my mother taught my sister how to be responsible. How to take responsibility for her actions. How to cook and clean. But she loved me. <laughs> I was a little steak of boo boo. <laughs> and she just let me grow up. So when I grew up, I didn't know a thing about being a grown up. Thanks for letting me shit. Thanks. Oh, hey, everybody. My name is Tiffany again. Well, is this a therapy session or something? Did I walk up in the little room? You know how I know? Because that's where I got my vitamins and my advice from when I was having this one. And uh, I don't remember seeing you in the bedroom or the delivery room, Mr. Frank. So I suggest <laughs> you go find that one that belonged to you. You know, the one you almost killed. Look here. $20. Get yourself a bus pass in some business. Thanks for letting me share. Yeah. 
one that believes that pain share is pain less. I'm a recovering addict. I have 21 years clean. for the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous. Because when I came up in the rooms, I didn't know how to live. I didn't know how to be happy. I didn't know how to spread joy. I didn't even know how to lay on the floor and roll around and play with my kids because nobody ever taught me that. So the play black and blues is about the recovery process. It's about going through all that pain, all that pain, all that pain, and then getting to a place where you learn how to laugh where you learn how to love, and you learn how to live again. The play is done as a benefit for two youth organizations. A youth organization that I founded, which is called MIB. Did y'all see Men in Black? Anybody see Men in Black? Okay, this is Men Invested in Boys and Girls. It's a program that's every Saturday morning at Edgerton Recreation Center. And I had a teacher, his name was James Perkins. He taught at number four school. And he was the type of teacher, if you walked into his room in the middle of the wintertime and you had sneakers on, after school he was going to take you to J.M. Fields and buy you some sneakers, some, some boots. I thought, okay, I'm dating myself. J.M. Fields, two guys, anybody know anything about that? Okay? <laughs> okay. He was the type of teacher that would take you home after school and sit you down in the living room with your mama and your daddy and tell you why he chastised you. You know, he was one of those caring, compassionate teachers. He passed away a few years ago. So they have a foundation for him called the James Perkins Youth Academy over on um, Dewey Avenue at um, St. Louis Tabernacle. So this program, this production is to fund or to make a contribution to those youth organizations. The tickets are only $15. Tonight they're only $10. So if anyone would like to purchase one, um, you can see Vivian wherever she went. She probably, oh, there she go. Okay, that's Vivian. <laughs> that's my, that's my brain, okay? Right there, that's my brain. Um, so I want to thank Jose for allowing us to be here. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming. And we hope to see you at the show. Thank you so very much.